Hi, y'all. Ain't on half step and Marcus J is live. We here in the building. We were here last week live because it was snowing and doing all kinds of stuff, but we had a great replay show for y'all. We celebrated Black History Month with the interview with Miss Beverly Johnson, who is the cousin of Alex Haley uh, and a descendant of Chicken George. We talked about Brother Man, the black comic with Brother Dawu Anyabile, who was here last week. But enough of last week. We're moving into this week. We got a special guest on the live line who we're going to introduce to you momentarily. And a very special guest here live in the studio. We got a lot to get into tonight. What did former New York City Mayor Rudy Giuliani say that got a lot of people kind of bugging? And he got a very interesting co-signer. Two days ago was the 50-year anniversary of the assassination of El Haj Malik Al Shabazz, Malcolm Little, Malcolm X. Tonight's show is dedicated to his memory, and we ask him what the hell. And we got so many what the hells that if I gave you all of them, it would blow your mind. And tonight is the fourth Monday of the month. What does that mean? It means we got the Diva Diaries. So I just kind of teased who we got in the studio tonight. Ain't no hashtag Marcus J's right now, y'all. thinking cap socially conscious talk that's entertaining with a dash of humor and the top sports stories of the week it's time for ain't no half stepping with marcus j sellers has jordan jordan with two seconds to go puts it up it's good at the buzzer michael jordan has won it for chicago manning lobs it burris alone If they lying, then they must be half stepping. You know, half stepping with Marcus J is live. We back in the building, and we need you to be down with us tonight at 804-402-2893 to be down with the flagship show right here, Legacy Internet Radio. We appreciate everybody who is listening to us tonight. We appreciate those folks that are listening to us live on TuneIn on your mobile apps. We see you out there. We see the lights on. We see you are riding in your cars, you know, with your tablets and your cell phones and all kinds of mobile devices. You got us tuned in to the TuneIn application. You have searched legacy internet radio and you have found us you hear the sound of my voice live we appreciate it thank you to everybody who has tuned in on our website www.legacyinternetradio.com you see our smiling faces on there of course you're listening to the flagship show right here on ain't no half stepping with marcus j every monday night at 7 p.m we appreciate those folks that are listening to our replays you're listening to us on TuneIn. Excuse me. You're listening to us on YouTube. I'm sorry. Right now, we appreciate you folks as well. We got a lot to get into tonight. We weren't here last week live. Of course, we still had a show. You heard me in some pre-recorded segments, but mostly you heard some replays. It's Black History Month, so we're celebrating that. We celebrated it last week with some prior clips of the show where you heard us discuss some black inventors and we talked about some female pioneers and things of that sort tonight we will highlight the legacy of el Haj malik el shabazz also known as malcolm little and more commonly known as malcolm x so we'll hear some uh, some words from him tonight we'll play pieces of his speeches uh tonight so we appreciate everybody who's listening and we hope that you enjoy that uh, here tonight and so as I do at this point of the show every single week I make sure that I introduce the crew we're short crew tonight very very small and intimate we appreciate that we can have a nice old school conversation with just the three of us introducing first you hear her every single 
fourth Monday of the month, right here on Legacy and that radio on Ain't No Half Step with Marcus J. She brings you the Diva Diary. She's my little sis. We call her the Dating Pool Diva. We got Arthur Charisma in the room with us today. Hey, What's how up, you girl? doing? Doing fabulous. How you doing? I've been good. I've been good. No complaints. No complaints. Uh, uh, no few, complaints well a few but i didn't want to bring you down yeah, you know well, what i'm saying you know, I mean, you know. uh, this has been financial hell week for me for real? oh my god you need a dollar or something for everything gas or something? broke this oh, week real? everything phone my windshield my car for was real? broken i mean tires damn <laughs> new computer because that broke now remember you had mr lp steven sykes who hosts our tuesday show on live and radio he is our resident tech guru yes and i remember yes. the last time we spoke you were looking to have mr lp kind of help you out with the computer that i i'm, it, it I'm was guessing beyond, that didn't work out it was yeah, beyond him it was beyond him oh, i mean man. point of no return man Damn, so cool. i just had to go to the walmart's no no uh you know advertising we just gave him a free yeah, no, we, no we gave him a freebie just now thank you thank you thank you very much <laughs> I had to go to the discount store. I can dig it. And get me another one, uh, all in one. So you did get HP. one. HP. You did get and one. I got. And you gave another that. plug just now. You gave two plugs in yeah, one statement. They they got to pay me for that. <laughs> yeah, they really need to pay us. But for I got that. fussed at by your tech guy, Mr. LP. He said, "I told you not to buy that crap. Yeah, he Why probably, did you buy that? I could tell you offline who he would have probably told you to go out and buy because I've gotten fussed at. He can't stand." These people whose computer I'm looking at right now, we got two computers in uh -huh. the room. They're yep. both made by the same manufacturer. And Mr. LP, Stephen Sykes, who hosts our Tuesday night show and live and radio, as well as our Sunday show, Amplified Gospel. He tells us that we shouldn't deal with these people. I ain't going to tell you who they are because we ain't paying them. But So I wasn't the only one. Us. No, I get fussed at. I get okay. fussed okay. at by him as well. Of course. All right. So let's continue the introductions, <laughs> rounding out the trio for the night. This is... My brother on the live line, who we have not had here on the line with us on Ain't No Half Stepping with Marcus J. In quite a while, he used to be our sports uh, our basketball contact. And, of course, he has morphed into more of a regular personality. We had him here in the studio last fall, and now we got him back on the live line. My brother, my partner, and my oldest friend, we got my brother Kate up on the live line. What's up, bro? Peace, peace, peace. How's everybody doing? Peace to all the gods, the earth, stars, and squares. How's everybody doing? Yeah, we good, man. You you making sure you 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 touched on everybody. You got the peace. Did, 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 did I cover the, did I cover the whole gamut? You got a lot of them, man. I'm sure that there's some folks out there that feel a little <laughs> bit left out by you right now. But hey, you got the you got oh, the gods man. and the earths and the stars and the squares. I think you got quite a few people covered. Uh, that's a good number. Yeah, that's a good number. How's everybody doing, man? Ah, uh, we good. I'm all right. And the diva's good. Marcus J is How good. How you doing? You all right? I right, hey man. I, I say this, man. I'm breathing, so I must be doing something right. I just, I, I just leave that, that, man. I can dig it. Ain't no half step on Marcus J. All right, listen. Uh, we got you for a good little chunk of the evening, and so we're not going to waste none of your time. We're going to get right into some stuff, uh, a couple of things that I want to get to right at the top, and then we'll kind of move on to more fluff later on. But uh, first thing I want to get into, Dub, I want you up on this one first. You know, some of these things you and I talk about, some of these things we don't. Uh, former mayor of New York City, Mayor Rudolph Giuliani, who has been outspoken. He's a Republican. Uh, he is a former candidate for the presidency of the United States, along with him being a former mayor. Uh, and he's outspoken in his criticism for our current president, Barack Hussein Obama. Uh, and this week or last week, I should say, he had some very interesting comments for the president and of course now he has gotten some death threats for the comments that he had and i won't get into the long story about what he said you know i think we you and i know enough about what was said and hopefully the listeners who you know if you listen to this show then hopefully you're listening to the news as well but the gist of it the gist of what he said was president barack hussein obama does not love the United States. And he was speaking 
uh, in reference to the current way the president is leading our country with regards to his handling of the international affairs, some of the domestic, uh, excuse me, some of the international terrorists that have uh, made their uh, made their business public and the way the president has been handling it is not something that Giuliani is very happy about. And so he came out and said that our president does not love uh, America. Giuliani said he was disgusted with Obama's response to the executions of Egyptian Coptic Christians by ISIS and the attack on Jewish market in Paris by radicals inspired by the terrorist group. Of course, Islamic extremi extremism is not an abstraction, he continued. Uh, he also pointed out that the president did not make comments to the press after the racial unrest in Ferguson, saying, quote, there's something wrong with the rhetoric here. I think the president is a very poor leader, uh, saying he does not measure up to past presidents, Ronald Reagan, John F. Kennedy, and Bill Clinton. Uh, I think we got it properly set up. Uh, of course, we'll get into more of the article that I'm reading here on uh, CNN. If we need to, Dub, jump in here. What do you think? You got a very prominent former mayor of the largest city in the country. Uh, so everybody knows who Rudolph Giuliani is. He says the president doesn't love America. You say what to that? I could give a damn what he thinks, and I think that a lot of people... Um, probably will feel the same. Let's let's just take a let's take a step back and not necessarily look at his comments, but just look at who he is. You know, let's keep in mind. <clears throat> and for, <clears throat> excuse me. And for all of those that are in the uh, New Jersey, New New York area, remember that at the time that nine eleven uh, that that happened, uh, Giuliani was not necessarily the most uh, praised individual. He was on the verge of actually, if I could be mistaken, but I believe that he was on the verge of losing anyway. And from what I, what I remember, what I know, a number of New Yorkers hated this guy. Okay? So now uh, you, you, you have the attacks on 9-11, and now Rudy Giuliani is being praised as being uh, America's mayor. He handled 9-11 with so much class and so this, that, and the third. As time has gone on, he's kind of moved out of the, uh, the, the eyesight of popularity among, in America. But now, uh, years down the line, he feels that he can make this particular comment. And now, guess what? Rudy Giuliani is now relevant. You know, you're having individuals that are seeking to be the president on the uh, Republican side having to basically field questions in regards to his particular comment. Well, let's just take a look at it. Outside of him making these particular comments, what is Rudy Giuliani really doing right now? Exactly. My point exactly. Nothing. It means nothing. It means nothing, and it goes along with the same type of uh, rhetoric that you hear from people on the right when they want to attack the president. And to me, personally, and I could be wrong, but personally, I think that it's a little bit of underlying... Um, I, I'm going to go there. I'm going to think that it's a little bit of underlying racism. You know, it, 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 you can take it and look at it. Does he mean, you know, is he trying to say, you know, hang his hat on this whole thing about the president not being a, a, cat, a Christian? Uh, is he trying to basically say that, you know, he's not raised like us. Us like who? Who do you mean us? What are you referring to? Us like who? Well, here's a, here's, a rest, no, he, here's the rest of it, Doug. Giuliani said the White House owes him an apology. Uh, after stating that he had made similar remarks about the president during the 2008 campaign. Uh, Giuliani said that the claim from White House spokesman Eric Schultz was not true, saying, quote, he thinks that they should owe him an apology, whereas, you know, Giuliani has been making statements like this for a long time, and it was a very prominent attack that a lot of the folks on the right made because I think when you say just now that it was a hint of racism I think that this is something that they tried to use against the president when they tried to hang the Islamic tag on him as if that's some sort of negative but we know the climate in our country today uh, is to you know it's kind of you know it's kind of in style to be against the Islam the, the Islamics or the Muslims I rather I should say uh, and since they tried to attach that religion to our president, it was kind of par for the course for them to make these kinds of statements about Barack Hussein Obama in spite of his name, or I guess uh, probably in part because of uh, his name. 
But here's a thing. Here's a, here's a, here's a wrinkle that I want to add to this, brother Dub. There is a very interesting co-signer to President. Excuse me. I'm sorry. <laughs> Did I just call him President? Former Mayor Rudolph Giuliani. Yeah. How about that? Former Mayor Giuliani. Yeah. There was a interesting co-signer to his rhetoric. I'm going to play a clip from someone who co-signed him. Uh, this is a 12-year-old black Georgia young man. And I set it up that way because when you hear his take, you're going to be very, very interested. It's about a three-minute clip. So those folks listening, just kind of sit tight, be patient. Dub, I want you to drop your phone on to mute. Listen to this young brother. We're going to come back and talk about this on the other side. Let's take a listen. My name's CJ Pearson, and today I wanted just to applaud Mayor Rudy Giuliani for his comments about President Barack Obama. Here's the truth of the matter. I don't want to be politically correct. I don't care about being politically correct at this point. President Obama, you don't love America. If you really did love America, you would call ISIS what it really is. An assault on Christianity, an assault on America, and a downright hate for the American values that our country holds. A freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and every single thing that our country stands for. If you loved America, President Obama, if you loved America, you wouldn't try to take away what hardworking Americans have worked for their entire lives. You wouldn't do this if you loved the people of America. And when it takes a mayor, the former mayor of New York, Rudy Giuliani, to call you out on your downright hatred for America, then so be it. He, I, I applaud him for his comments, and I definitely do hope that one day, that one day, other people will, will get enough guts to speak out against your downright hatred for this nation. When you aren't willing to defend our country against the evil of terrorism, domestic and abroad, you don't love our nation. You just don't. It makes no sense to me, and I don't understand why you would. Here in America, we fight for what we believe in, and we will, and we will destroy and annihilate ISIS. Why? Because they attacked us. President Obama, when they kill innocent Americans that have done no wrong except report on what is their constitutional right as journalists, and you do nothing about it, you don't care about their lives. You can care less. But here's what you need to realize, that here in America, here in America, we don't back down to terrorists. We fight them on their own battleground and we annihilate them to the very end. Here in America, we don't allow the government to take away what we work for, but we continue to work harder. We continue to work harder so that we may continue to succeed. That's what we do in America. And President Obama, if you really did indeed love America, you'd do the same. You'd fight for our values, domestic and abroad, and you wouldn't take away the rights of the American people. Thank you all. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus Jay. Got a lot to uh, kind of respond to, Diva. I want. You up first, Dub. I know you got a lot. I know, hey, I, boy. I, I know, hey, okay, Dub. I know you got a lot to say on that. We're going to get you. I want the Devo up here first. I don't have a lot to say. Don't I, worry, it, it, Dub. It, it, Dub, we know you got a lot to say on this one. I want the Devo on this first. Diva, uh, you heard the young brother. Did you yes, think about what the young brother got to say? My initial thought was that this young man has been brainwashed. He's been coached. Someone has told him what to say. It sounds scripted. It doesn't sound like something that a young man would say. You know, like some of the wording is just something that a, an adult, and not just any adult, an adult that is political and knows all, you know, all of that stuff that's going on with ISIS. A 12-year-old typically wouldn't be that into politics like that right. and I, I just don't um, think that those are his true feelings and I think that when you start to coach 
young kids into their belief systems, whether it's political um, or religious or whatever, then you have someone who will grow up just following what someone told them to do yeah. instead of thinking for themselves. And it's kind of kind of sad. All right, Dub. We know you got a lot to say, Dub. Go ahead, man. It's your turn. What you got? All right, check it. First of all, just to let everybody know, ain't no... Last seven crew. This was the first time that I actually listened to the audio of uh, this young cat. Uh, I read a little bit of the, um, the the transcript, and something that I said to Marcus J earlier was that just from reading a bit of the transcript, it seemed as though that um, you know a little bit of it. It seemed to me that he was regurgitating. Let me give you some examples, right? So this 12 year old cat made mention to about rights being taken away. It would be interesting to ask him what rights were being taken away. Um, now, he also, uh, refer and I'm, I'm throwing this out there basically for everyone to answer to their own question and see where I'm coming from. All, this cat also talked about taking away uh, things of hardworking Americans. Ask me exactly what it is that's being taken away from these hard, these hardworking people. I know that things are being taken away from us hardworking people via the government, but don't know what you're talking about. Um, he says in the beginning of the uh, spiel, he states that the president needs to say something so on and so forth, right? Um, so let's just say that the president does does say that. Does that change anything that ISIS will do or, you know, there's the way that they're trying to attack people? I doubt it. Um, uh, uh, how, how to, if he says that he does not love America, give me an example. Um, you know, he said down, he made a mention to downright hatred. Can anyone that's listening tell me exactly where or what it would be that the president has done or said that shows a downright hatred? Um, he, he made mention to ISIS killing innocent people. Well, if you know, like I know, and I know Marcus J knows, um, we've been bombing a lot of is, uh, Islamic countries under the, under, not without the media telling what's going on. So what about those innocent people? And also, let's keep in mind that there was, I believe, one or two extractions, extractions that, were tr that were attempted that failed. So that means to me that they had to get the go-ahead in order to try to go get those individuals. Am I right or wrong? No, I can dig it. Here, here's my thing on it, man. Okay. Here, here's my thing on it. Do we always have to relegate ourselves to the lowest possible common denominator when we disagree with somebody? For example... You know what? Me and the diva sitting here, we having a, dis a discussion. We disagree with uh, with each other, and then all of a sudden, one of us says, "Well, f you, then." <laughs> You're stupid. You're stupid. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like that's what this sounds like to me. Yeah. We disagree with you politically, so you don't love the country. And when we, you know, when I set this up in social media, the way I set it up, I asked a simple question, Dub. You know, is Giuliani being divisive? You know, that's one of the words that the right side always likes to use when they attach themselves to rhetoric towards our current president. President, They want to call him divisive and they want to say these negative things. And when you say that someone does not love the country, can you think of a, a more divisive thing to say? We're getting a hit from Kevin here in social media. Kevin says, America's mayor is being divisive and he's right. What muddies the water is that he is guilty of many of the very claims he's made against the president. Has a history shown again and again that it's templated dictators that make the best mudslingers. And, you know, I tend to agree with Kevin. You know, do we really have to go there because we disagree with his tactics? We got to say he don't love America. And when you say dub or when you suggest that it might be a hint of racism, here it's oftentimes the people who are the greatest uh perpetrators of racist tactics that like to tell you that you're being racist by responding to their bullshit to that you say what <laughs> you're absolutely you're absolutely right you're absolutely right i mean but you know what i, I really don't like is and we all it, it's uh, it's also i'll also say this it's a little bit of everybody's fault. Here's why. We don't get to uh, basically get on these news programs and call bullshit bullshit. You know, there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of media outlets that basically kind of tell you who you need to be mad at, what you need to be mad at. I guarantee that if everybody didn't pay Giuliani no mind last week with that stupid-ass comment, 
we, you and I, and, and the dating pool diva, we wouldn't be discussing this right now. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But when he makes these crazy-ass comments, the news media pumps it up, and then now, like I said earlier, Giuliani now is relevant because he made this comment. He's been on how many news stations within the last 48 hours, 72 hours, talking about this stupid-ass comment that he made, and then he doubled it, doubled down on it. And with this young cat, I would not be surprised if maybe one of his parents or something like that, that they possibly may have been watching, I'll just say, Fox News. Young CJ And C. Pierce again, a name. number of the things that the young cat was referring to are things that I hear on these radio and TV stations. So that's why it made me believe that, you know, he's regurgitating because I know I can honestly say that if I was to pose these questions to the kid, to the young cat, I guarantee he could answer a lot of them, no. probably 90 percent of them. Probably, probably not. I mean, but in his defense, young C.J. Pearson is 12. He's 12 years old. And the article states that he has been a, a staunch Republican conservative since the mere age of eight when he supported John McCain in his 2008 presidential there right campaign. There. there it goes right there, because guess what, dog? Let's just totally be honest. At 8 to 12 years old, were we even thinking about politics? Were we no. thinking about what side of the aisle were we on? Did we really even follow a, politi a political figure? Nope. Well, I can tell you that you're going to follow what the people around you follow because I remember when, exactly. you know, I remember my point, when... My point, my point exactly. Exa exactly. My point I, re exactly. I remember when President... Barack Obama was elected president because I was excited about that in 2008. Mama J, of course, was excited about that. And she just, just is grinning and everything at five years old at the time. She had no point of reference at five years old. You don't know that there's never been a black president before ever, ever. You know what I mean? At, when the, at, when, at, when, at eight years old, um, you and I living in Jersey City, it would have, we knew that the president, I want to say probably was Ronald Reagan at that particular time, well, right? We were but eight, guess what? Yeah. We ain't no Ronald Reagan. Ronald Reagan was selling, uh, you know, a part of selling uh, guns to other countries. We didn't know that Ronald Reagan was taxing the hell out of people. We didn't know none of that stuff. Nah, Ronald none Reagan, you know, the, the, the conservatives like to look at him as a great president, but the reality is when you look at his record and, and you can, see what he did for people of color and what he did for people for the middle class down, which is we know is the vast majority of Americans, he was a miserable, miserable, horrible president. But you'll have a lot of the far right wing conservatives. You have the rich, you know, paying the rich to tell the middle class that the poor want to take their jobs. About <laughs> you got those people are the <laughs> ones who were basically talking about how great Ronald Reagan was. Yeah. Now, isn't Ronald Reagan the same president that amnestied a number of uh, illegal aliens? I mean, illegal immigrants. At the, if I'm not mistaken, I'm not sure about that, but I, I, if I, I could be wrong. But I believe that he did something that had to do with immigrants during his tenure. He may have, but I, 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 I can tell you what I close to what the it, it's very close to what the current president is trying to put through. I can tell you so, what he did. I can tell you which, what he did way, do. Which way you want it? I can tell you what he did do. I, I can tell you that when he was the governor of California, which most people don't even realize he was, when he was the governor of California, he eradicated a lot of the social programs that made it very difficult for people in the middle and lower class to get a lot of the benefits that they earned, that they paid into. And he turned around and he made those same practices very, very prominent during his presidency 10, 12 years later. So Ronald Reagan wasn't a great president, at least not and for us. keep in mind what happened when the Black Panthers went and keep in mind when the Black Panthers went to go uh, knock on uh, knock on City Hall's door. Well, he, he, he you know, again, here's some more history, Dub. I know that you know, and there ain't no half step and Marcus J listeners, and we know we got some truth fighters that are listening to us tonight. I'm sure you guys know, but the truth of the matter is, yeah. Ronald Reagan was very instrumental in this dismantling of the Black Panther Party. He, along with J. Edgar Hoover, who was running the uh, the FBI at the time because the Black Panthers, of course, being founded and having their base in California and Oakland, more specifically, 1967. Who was the governor in 1967 in California? Hello. Mm. <laughs> yeah, very true. This curious. actor guy. This actor guy. Yeah, the guy. Yeah, the guy. The, the dude. Ain't no house to have a market All right. We're going to move along here. Uh, we want to talk about El Hajj Malik El Shabazz Malcolm, Little Malcolm X. We're going to talk about him in just a minute. But one thing, Dub. 
The next thing I want to get to, I want the dating pool diva to comment on this one first. I want you to follow her up. This next thing that we're going to get into, I can be honest with you and tell you that it got more uh, it, it got more attention than probably any other subject that I've had on my wall uh, in social media in probably, let's just say, a very long time. Uh, the headline to this story says, Dare to Wear Men in Cashmere Mini Dress. Uh, here, here, here's it. And the Dina, dating pool diva is laughing at K-Dab is giving me the, oh, man. Here's the deal. Um, I'll just read some of the article and then we'll, we'll kind of get into it. Clothing, of course, uh, becoming less gender specific. Lines of blurring at Hood by Air's FW 2015 runway show in New York. Male models wore slit dresses down the runway while public school showered women, uh, show women wearing men's trousers. On Sunday, New York-based designer Telfair Clemens had two male models strut the runway and deconstructed cashmere mini dresses with matching leg warmers. There's <laughs> nothing new for Telfair, who has long been recognized for his avant-garde designs. In 2010, he fashioned sheer tank tops from plastic bags, and last year he put his male tribe in mini skirts. For his fall 2015 collection, Telfair continues to play with this motion, this notion of gender bending. Uh, the women wore full looks that looked like designer versions of Orange is the New Black Correction facility garb. Meanwhile, the men appeared in these light, sweet, fluffy sweater dresses that look both tough and <laughs> sensual. Uh, I got a different article here. It's a blog that's written uh, on the black and blue dog dot com. And for the record, I got that last one from Yahoo. This one I'm getting from the black and blue. Uh, this is a blog that was written by Maria La Lloyd, who is a blogger. Uh, she's talking about the recent uh, explosion of gay men uh, in the social consciousness. She speaks of the prancing elites. She's talking about the gay man who is very prominent in the new TV show uh, Empire. And she begs the question if the social consciousness of America is looking to effeminate uh, black males by having them, uh, I guess for lack of a better term, wear dresses. Uh, Dave Chappelle, we know um, in large, large part of the reason why he walked away from Comedy Central is because he did not like the direction of where they wanted to take his show, largely because they were looking to have him do certain characters that he was not uh, he was not in favor of characters like uh, what's what's the Tyler Perry one? Uh, help me out, somebody. Uh, Medea. Yeah. Medea. Medea. Uh, uh, with Martin Lawrence with the uh, mama from Shanae. the show, Shanae. Mm -hmm. uh, Eddie Murphy with the characters in the Nutty Professor movies. Mm -hmm. Flip Wilson. Of course, we're going a little bit far back, but uh, we can start off by the jumping point, Diva, of having this particular fashion designer put men in dresses. <laughs> But the main thing that I want to talk about is the effemination of the male. I had this article on my wall about a week ago, actually last Tuesday on the 17th is when I had this article on my wall. And in the week since then, I've gotten many, many, many comments, some of which I'm going to read tonight. I saw this article pop up on a, another wall uh, here in social media in the last couple of days and even more recently within the last few hours. So this is a discussion that is okay. long overdue. Right, and I, I could say a whole lot about I, it. Well, say a whole lot. <laughs> I got K-Dub on the live line, Ain't No Half Stepping, with Marcus J. We're live from the Den of Legacy Internet Radio. We're thanking everybody listening to us on TuneIn. We're thanking everybody that's listening to our replays right now on YouTube. K-Dub is on the live line. He's joining us here from uh, Atlanta, GA. He's going to join us in his comment right after you diva what's your thoughts here okay i have a lot of thoughts um and i want to first premise what i'm about to say um with saying i have nothing against homosexual people i'm probably very liberal when it comes to you know gay and lesbian and bisexual and all that i don't have anything against those people however i do think it's something wrong with you know people walking down the runway men in skirts with little leggings under it. Like, I don't think that's cute at all. I don't think the fashion 
um, that's coming out nowadays for males is very cute. Um, it is very feminine. Um, I don't know if it's out there to emasculate. I don't know if it's out there to um, appeal to that, you know, LGBT, you know, community. I don't know what it's really, what, what it's geared for. I mean, more than, you know, money. We know it's a money thing, but I don't know if it's supposed to um, be for homosexuals or heterosexuals or both. I just don't, I don't like the confusion you know, that's out there today. And, you know, I watch stuff like Medea. I watch stuff like, um, I watch Empire. And I don't have a problem with Jamal on the show because it's realistic. There are gay couples out there. Let's stop acting like there aren't. You know what I'm saying? And, and people who complain about the show in general, you know, that's real life. All that, you know, stuff that's happening on the show, that's what really happens. So why try to hide it or pretend it doesn't exist? I don't have an issue with that. You know, it's just, I, I don't, just don't understand the confusion with the skirts and the dresses and the tight leggings and all that on the men nowadays. It's not cute. Doug, I got a lot of comments here in social media on this one. It just blew up. Before I read those, I want your initial statement. We're going to build on this some more. So whatever you say won't, won't be your last word. Just jump in here and tell me what you think initially. <clears throat> I'm going to say this, man, and regardless... Um, Regardless of what people may think or whatever like that, this is my total, honestly, honest opinion. People need to knock it the fuck, knock it off. Because the, what you would say, I'm getting a little uh, background, that's why I'm kind of you got a little, you got, um, a little, you got a little feisty there a minute ago. You, 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 you all right? Well, yeah, because here's the thing, man, here's the thing. I'm taking it, and I'm going to take it kind of more broader, is that, you know, the one thing in order to conquer a people, take their men away. We're continually to get, we as black people, and I'm not, I can really care less about, this is not my concern in regard to anyone outside of the black people. These are the people that I love, more people that I'm concerned about. You take away the black man out of the community by one, incarcerating those individuals. You put uh, different laws, different things on the books so that you can get them either eradicated from society or even killed. So now you have women raising children. Okay, now for the men that are not under that particular umbrella, let's start, you know, changing the way that they present themselves. Let's start, you know, making uh, 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 skirts or what I heard something. Uh, I heard somebody uh, describe um, they called it the uh, hood skirt or something like that, where you take your shirt and wrap it around you or whatever like that and make it look like a skirt. Listen, man. Hey, maybe I might be old school. I'm still here. So obviously old school still works. Knock it off. Stop supporting these things that are basically taking away from men being men. Those different, these, this, this thing about the relaxed dress and, and, and having people wear, uh, uh, what was it, like tights and all this other. I, I'm, I'm not a fan of it. I'm not going um, to support it. Uh, when I see bullshit, I'm going to call bull, bullshit. It ain't got nothing to do with whether or not, hey, I know homosexuals. Hey, I love them, and these are my people or whatever like that. But... This right here, I'm not feeling it. There's a whole lot of emotion behind it. I, I may not be articulate, articulating it the way that I feel about it, but, I mean, look, if we continue to do it, you know, we already, I mean, look at, look at this short amount of time. Look at this short amount of time. We got guys, and I live in Atlanta, we got guys walking around the mall with purses, heels, and lipstick. Yeah, that's I know. Cool. I, I got Everybody you. Think that I, that's cool? It's it's not cool. And you know, I, I'm I'm gonna offer my opinion here in a minute. Um I'm just I'm gonna get some comments. So Diva and Dub, y'all just st stand by for me for a second because I got a lot of comments here that I'm gonna read and I'm gonna attribute these as best that I can. Uh the first comment that I have here, you know, Kelly says that no one needs to see that. Uh so she's talking about the uh men in dresses. True. Uh, says that uh, a man in a dress is only appealing to a sick mind and the man wearing it is suffering from mental illness as well. Sick behavior, product of a sick mind, sick mind, uh, product of sick environment and sick examples to follow. Bottom line, man and dress don't go together. There is no amount of money that would make him do that. Uh, Kim. Kim says that it's disturbing. The bigger issue uh, in general is androgynous mindset that is 
taking root. It's no longer okay for girls to play with dolls and boys with trucks. Women want to be everywhere and in everything, wearing pants, making pants, ironing pants, and men, and she's using that term loosely, as a result of culture, nurture, and environment are losing their identity as men. We can act like it doesn't matter all day, uh, but it's a direct result of the breakdown of relationships, of marriage, family, and healthy relationships. Uh, Francis says that she just can't. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we all know the new phrase. I can't. Hey, Mark. Can, can, okay. I, I got more. I'm. A, you want to jump in, but because there's more that I want to read. I just here. wanted to say one. I just wanted to say one thing. What I think that it also develops is. Okay, Dad, you still there? Still there? I think we may have lost. He got so excited, he yeah, got cut man. off. Yeah. Oh, his, his, his line is still showing connected, but we'll come back to his comment. Michelle K is checking in. She says that she agrees with you, Diva. She says men need to dress like men. She ain't got a problem with the gay community, but seeing men on the runway wearing skirts is kind of strange, uh, but it's to each his own. It's not her place to judge. Uh, and that's K-Dub. I think we lost him before, but that's him calling back. Uh, so we appreciate that. We'll get him back here on the live line here in just a moment as we uh, we'll get Kada back on the live line as we continue to read these comments. Dub, you back on the line? Okay, we'll get him in a minute. Uh, Dana is saying, <laughs> Dana says, what the hell, uh, which is uh, the name of this segment here. She's saying, what the hell? And we're still trying to get Kada. We're still trying to get him back here on the live line. Dana's saying, what the hell? She's saying that this nonsense is exactly why this generation is confused about who they are, their purpose in life, and their lack of self-respect, their further respect of others. It's sad to see the bright spots of our culture have been diminished, and she could care less about anyone's sexuality. This is just going too far. I think that is exactly what K-Dub was trying to say. Uh, let's see. Yes, I was. Yeah, and Brandy says uh, it's a silly question that she wants to ask, and it's her comment, but she's asking if men wore loincloths, uh, some sort of sort, uh, skirt in tribal days, Scottish men wearing kilts. What about togas? Uh, she doesn't agree with today's style and fashion. She just wanted to clarify. Uh, and when she made that comment, there were several p folks that tried to kind of address that statement and saying that skirts versus togas and uh, loincloths and things of that sort are much, much different because if you're wearing a loincloth, a lot of it had to do with the climate that you were in or the togas, of course, that's cultural and same with the, uh, kilts. the kilts that they wear in Scotland. Uh, so it's a little bit different. Uh, now, uh, Kyle jumped in, and, and Kyle is an openly gay man, and he's got a lot of comments here. I'm not going to read them all, but the gist of it is uh, he's a little bit over the discussion. Uh, he doesn't think that we should be having the discussion anymore. He thinks that we should just go ahead and move on, and his quote specifically says, the opinions and arguments are boring. It's been done. It will be done. Men and women will wear whatever they want, and their mannerisms have nothing to do with it. Uh, it's funny how in one instance black men are criticized for not connecting with their ancestors who wore types of articles of clothing. Uh, and then the next thing you know, wearing a dress, skirt, or toga uh, makeup means that you're less than a man. Uh, and so that is where he was going. Uh, he was definitely, I don't want to use the word attacked, but there was definitely some uh, some comments with regards to that. You had a gay man who jumped in, and while I uh, respect him being a gay man, I, I have no issues with anyone as an individual who makes an individual choice to do and be what he or she chooses to do and be. I'm going to still have an opinion, and I'm not going to be made to feel like I'm some sort of mean person, bigot, or uh, person that is against others because I have an opinion. I can respect you and love you, but I don't have to respect and love the choices that you make. At the end of the day, I know plenty of gay men. I know more gay women than gay men, but I know gay, plenty of gay people. And for the most part, they don't want to see a dude in a dress. They just don't. They just don't. Just like, just, just like, just like to be honest with you, and I know <clears throat> lesbian females, there's a lot of dudes out here. I don't want to see a chick that's, that's dressed 
like me or even more 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 do this than me well if that's even, it's, a, it's, even no, that's I, I, I got i got so you it goes, both, it goes both ways i got you on that but here in the, the only thing that i'm going to say to that is you know you know sue jumps in and sue says that she's always dressed like a dude like a man and she doesn't have the same kind of uh, backlash as a woman as men have had. Now, Diva, I want your comment on this one because you got to hold up, Dub, hold up. Uh, this is a female who's dressed as a man. And, you know, she says that, you know, why y'all tripping? Kind of is what her point is. I've always dressed as a dude. Why y'all tripping? What, you th- what, well, what do you say to that? Everybody knows that women can wear what they want. I mean, since we became liberated and all, we can wear pants, skirt, or whatever. It's not a big deal. But when you see a man with a certain type of anatomy hanging out of a dress, I mean, that's just not cute. <laughs> I'm sorry. Right. It's well, different. Well, yeah. I mean, Shireen, is, uh, she, she, she jumps in and she comments off of, JR, excuse me, of Kyle's. We'll get to JR here in a minute. Uh, she jumps off of Kyle's statement here and she's basically disagreeing. She says, Men don't need to be feminine. Some are more feminine than women. Uh, JR says that the dress that way creates confusion. At the end of the day, as a man is a man for a reason. Woman is a woman for a reason, no matter what your belief, the fact is fact. Now women say they can wear and do things uh, as they want as a woman. When we blur those lines, it creates the confusion. Dub, I want you to jump back in here, uh, and I'm going to ask you a specific question before we move on. I want you to answer this question. We're going to move on to something else. My specific question for you, K-Dub, is, is it different for men versus women? Why or why? Different for men, and unfortunately, see, here's the thing. It, it unfortunately, it is that way. But throughout society, excluding this particular issue, things are different. Get pointing, point, point. Uh, example: Dude got a whole bunch of girls. He a player. It's a whole bunch of. If it's a chick with a whole bunch of dudes, she's a whore. Hey, don't agree with it, but unfortunately, that's just that's just the uh, the world that we live in. It's different for chicks as well as it's different for dudes. Another example, again, I live in Atlanta, Georgia. This is going to be messed up, but I'm going to say it, and I'm going to just keep it real. Hey, when I see two females kissing, not really that upset, not turned off by it. You but know, I know if I see it's two a little dudes sexy, right? kissing, I, I, may be a little, I may be a little like, ooh, okay, all right. Yes, you'd be like, slow that's down. That's just how it is. You'd be like, slow down, cuz. No, I, yeah, I, I, exactly. That's just that, that, that's just how it is. Yeah. Some people get preferential treatment because of whatever uh, we got. I mean, it, it's across the board. It's yeah. across the You can take anything that we all deal with on a day-to-day basis. It's not an equal plane. Yeah, it's I, not I, an equal plane. I'm and me you... as a man, I don't, I don't, I'm not feeling a dude in a dress. No, That's I, it. That's I, my own personal view. I can dig it, man. I'm, I'm so glad that you made that point because the truth of the matter is, I think we live in a world where we don't like to acknowledge the fact that men and women are different. The way we interact with each other are different. Does not mean that there needs to be a level of disrespect, but we're we're just different. And the way we interact with each other and the world, the rules are different. Does not mean that men are in, you know, are a superior and women are inferior. Nobody's saying that, but there are different set of rules that apply for men and women. A dude gives a dude a pound and gives a dude a bro hug, and he does everything. He does everything he can to make sure that when he gives him that bro hug, that his cheek don't touch his homeboy's cheek. Whereas a woman could give a woman a kiss right on the mouth or very close to it and it ain't nothing to it. You know, it, it, if, the bed together. It, it, that was where I was, that was my next statement. You know, Kato, you know, we, you and I are brothers. We've been brothers since we was three and two years old. We ain't never slept in the bed together. But I bet you our sisters, not that we have actual sisters, but, you know, if, if I had a sister and you had a sister and they was as close as we were coming up, it would have been nothing for them to sleep in the same bed together. Nothing. You know what I mean? And, and, and that's not to say anything about them. It's just the way the world is. 
we didn't set these you know rules they're just not really rules it just kind of is what it is and some would say that that's homophobia you know that's one of the points that Kyle was making in his blog and I respect that I respect the fact that he's saying that today's world is not like it was and we are in a position to write the script about how we interact with each other we don't have to be afraid to show love and affection for another man as a man i get you on that but at the same time just look at nature just watch nature you know what i mean when you go home tonight if you're listening if you're at the crib don't turn us off because we're going to be on for at least another hour and a half but at 9 45 when we go off the air just turn on the nature channel and watch bears or watch lions or watch you know i don't know a yak <laughs> <laughs> or you in a freaking corn I don't know just watch nature and just watch how the male interacts not in a chauvinistic way because some of them are pretty damn nasty male versus woman but just look at how the male interacts with other males versus how a woman interacts with other a female interacts with other females doesn't mean as a human you got to be that way but that's just the nature of how males versus females are they're different that's my point. I'm not saying you got to be a lion as a male human and take the food from your family and climb in a tree and not let your kids eat. That's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is there's a natural order of how males interact with males and how females interact with females. And you'll see that females are a little bit more liberal about how they do it than males. Diva, you giving me the face. Jump in and tell me how crazy I am. From a female perspective, I think some women are concerned about this type of blurry lineness um, because we don't want our lions to turn into little weak cats. You know what I'm saying? We want them to be strong. We want them to be leaders. We want them to be bold. And if you're walking around with a dress on, how can I lead? How can I follow you? Right. <laughs> right. I mean. It, it, I, I make hey, it. I make. Girl, I make, I make it. Here. I make Watch it. As, I make it as plain. I make it plain for you. You know. Again, as a, as a, as a human, as a male, you know, I, I have made a very clear and a very <laughs> a special guest just came in a room and showed me something that kind of threw me off my game a little bit. But as a human male, I have made a very clear and distinct decision to respect every single human being, no matter what. And so if you want to be a male, a human male, a female, you want to be a gay male, a gay female, you want to be a transgender, all those things, I'm going to respect you until you disrespect me. That, that's, that's just the choice that I've personally made. But again, I'm going to come back to nature. Just going to come back to nature. Just watch lions, for example. If you saw a male lion who was more interested in other male lions instead of the female lion. What do you think would happen to that male lion? I, I, I'm not trying to, again, I'm not trying to offend anybody, but all I'm saying is when you look at a dude in a dress, there's a certain feeling that you will get and it just doesn't feel right. Can I ask a counter question? Please. Okay, is it more acceptable if that male in the dress is homosexual? Is it more acceptable? It wouldn't make a bit. It would make a bit of difference for me because I know gay men who think a dude in a dress is crazy. Right. <laughs> well. You know what I mean? Is you know I, I know it sounds contradictory. I, don't have a problem with I that. know it all sounds contradictory, and there's a lot of moving parts to the discussion. You know, I, you know, it would make more sense if I had more issues with a homosexual male than I did with any male in a dress. I know that it would make more sense for people hearing me speak that would understand me more i can't really you know I, I guess it's more about for me it's more about respecting a person as a person as opposed to respecting that person's choices i can respect you as a person to make whatever moral choices you're going to make if the moral choice that you've made as a man is i'm going to wear i'm, I'm going to be a man that likes men that's inside of you you know what i mean like you can't really do nothing about that because I do think that being gay is something that's a part of you. You don't get a choice in that. that that's something that I'm on record of saying. Whereas you got a choice if you're going to wear a dress. You ain't got to wear a dress if you don't want to wear a dress. Right. Uh, you just don't. You, you, you just don't. You know, what, 
you know what the beautiful part about this is? Let's just totally be honest. There's no, well, I won't say no right or wrong. There answer, really isn't. This is a debate. There's a, this, a, there's a, this, this debate can go on until the last breath of all of us. Nobody is going to, just people are going to feel, they're going to feel, you know, vested in you, you know, however it may be. Right. And no one can say, you know, if I make that particular statement, no one can tell me that I'm wrong for how I feel. Just like I can't tell uh, a guy that has a dress on that he. I mean, it's all about our particular choices. Can I make a statement and say I'm not feeling it? By all means, I do. And I don't think that just because I feel that way, if I see a dude with a dress, you know, that I'm going to be mean to him or try to fuck with him or anything like that. No, that, that's just not who I am as a person. Right. You know, but this debate right here, we can have it today. We can have it tomorrow. We can have it a year from today. We'll probably still end up at the same time. I, I think, and I'll put a bow on this, and we're going to go into a break, and we're going to move on to other, some, some other stuff, because today is two days after the anniversary of the assassination of Malcolm X, and I do want to get in some discussion on that. We'll talk about him on the other side. But I think what we oftentimes run into is because we have a very strong disagreement with each other that all of a sudden now we're not cool no more. Because I disagree with you on an issue even a major issue, we, we not cool no more. You know what I mean? Because you happen to be gay, and I don't think that gay people, and I'm, I'm speaking hypothetically here, I don't think that you should be gay. Now, all of a sudden, we not cool no more. That's not how I'm built. I'm not built that way. You know what I mean? If you gay and you choose to be gay, then cool. If we was already cool, then what? I'm supposed to not be cool with you no more? I, I know somebody that's in my inner circle that looked me square in the eye and told me if his son told him he was gay, he wouldn't deal with his son no more. That's not good, man. How do you do that? I don't understand how you do that. I, I, I don't understand how you do that. I'm going to have way, a, the I'm way, they, have the way a, that Because you know why? Because their son isn't gay. If, if they were in that particular situation, yeah. I, I would I would honestly think that if that was the situation I, I su- that they would I, rethink I suppose, their view. I suppose it's possible, but this person, because I've known him for 20 years, I, I, I really honestly believe him when he tells me that he would not deal with his son. But, 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 but again, you know, I don't have to agree with your choices to still love you and still deal with you. You know what I mean? Like, you can do some really dumb shit, and I still be like, all right, you know what? You my homeboy. You my homegirl. You know what I mean? We're going to roll through this, and we're going to rock with it. You know what I mean? That's just, I, that's how I am. If that's wrong, then so be it. We're going to take a break because, honestly, I don't want to talk about this no more. We're going to talk about some other stuff. On the other side, <laughs> yeah, on the other side, I do want to get some discussion in on El Hash Malik El Shabazz, also known as Malcolm Little Malcolm X. Two days ago was the 50-year anniversary of his assassination. So we're going to talk about that. Uh, we're going to talk about the Idaho woman who beat the hell out of another woman over Jesus. Yeah. And we're going to talk about what? Saturday Night Live. There was an appearance on Saturday Night Live last week that had a lot of people happy and a lot of people going, what the hell? Marcus J, Dating Pool Diva, K-Dub. Ain't no half stepping with Marcus J. Okay, that put your phone on mute. We're going to take a break. We're going to have a word from Malcolm X. We're going to come back in about six.